Car Jesus, been an I-100 gun in Bosque County, Texas. This is one week after the oats harvest. Here we have arrived in the field. Got a deer grazing there. And as we pan over to the left, we've got hogs coming in over the ridge in the distance. So Ben and I started off on our stalk across the field, and as we made our way, more hogs came in over the ridge. You notice the ones over to the left? There are more coming in at this time. Here we've advanced as far as we're going to go. I sped up the video to pass the time more quickly. The hogs are going through eating some of the spilled oats. And Ben and I are discussing which hogs we're going to take first. The reason why we're not moving any further forward is because the oats that are left are dry and crunchy. And it makes a lot of noise when we walk and we don't think we can stalk up any closer. Now what's important to notice right here is the ridge in the background. Any of the hogs that are under that yellow line are viable to shoot. Any hogs that are above that line are not. So if when we start shooting the hogs come toward us, we're good to go. If the hogs run away, can't shoot them. All right, mine's on the left, Ben's is in the center. Here we go. Both of our hogs go down and all of the rest run in the wrong direction. This is the view from my rifle. Just a slightly different view. At this point, we're waiting for the hog behind the hay bale to move from behind it so that Ben will have a shot at it. All right, it's now moved out from behind the hay bale and we are ready to go. And again, the hogs take off over the horizon. We ended up with a 120 pound sow and a 125 pound boar. After our shoot, Ben immediately spotted these hogs behind us on the opposite end of the field. And I spotted this small sounder that was on some corn that was left behind. We made an approach out into the field. And here we're working on deciding whether we want to go, not for the raccoon, but for this pair of hogs way off to the left, or if we want to go back to that sounder. We opted for the pair of hogs that immediately turned into three and we're going to approach and shoot them from the hay bale that's in front of us that's going to be 80 yards from them. The reason why we chose these hogs is that we thought we'd had a better chance of shooting what we thought were two hogs initially and having them drop and then making an approach on the hogs that are on the corn. As it turns out that didn't work out because the hogs on the corn ran off after we started shooting. Ben was going to take the hog on the left that didn't work out because it's not turning broadside, so we're going to take the two broadside boars here. Ben takes another shot at the one on the left and it runs, and it's out of view. Now this is the view from my rifle. When we discovered that we had three hogs instead of two, the plan was that we would each shoot an outside hog and then converge on the hog in the middle. But Ben's hog on the far left did not comply with our plan. And so we each took one of the broadside hogs. Ben did a quick follow-up that missed the hog on the far left. Yeah, let him go. And I watched it move in this direction, hoping that it would come back. It didn't seem too scared off. And here it just stands still for us, but we can't shoot in that direction. Stay frosty. As it starts to wander off, I realize I need to check on the hogs that are down to make sure that they're still down. Sure enough, both are still down. I scan back to look for the hog that's run off, and he's continuing towards the fence, and watch what happens right here. He ducks out through, the through a hole in the fence, headed towards the neighbor's place across the road. The downed hogs turn out to be a 180 pound boar and 190 pound boar. As we finished up on the two boars, Ben spied this hog over where the corn was. We made a stalk on the hog, got to within about 130 yards of it, got set up and decided to shoot from here. We both agree this is a good distance. We lined up, the countdown starts. Three, two, one. And as I pull the trigger, my scope loses power, so the next frame is going to be black, but this is my last point of aim, a little high on the hog. Screen goes blank, hog screams. I tell Ben my scope went out, tell him to shoot if he needs to. This is the view from Ben's rifle.
we briefly discuss what we want to do here. Then get shouldered on this rifle. We get ready to take the shot. Here we go. Three, two, one. This is the last frame just as Ben fires and as you can see his shot's going to be a little bit low. So here are our two shots. Mine's in yellow, Ben's is in red. That's where we're hitting the hog. The hog's going to go down right here. And the teachable moment for the day is that if a hog is down and screaming, shoot it again. You got away. While that hog disappeared into the brush. Ben spotted another hog down at the opposite end of the field again, and we weren't going to let this one get away. So we packed up our gear, started heading towards this hog. We needed to circle around this hog, and as we did so, the noise that we were okay, making going through the oats made a lot of noise. When you got him. He busted us, took Three, off running, stopped, two, one. and we dropped him right there. Here's the view from Ben's rifle. As the boar runs, I asked Ben to tell me when the boar clears the hay bale from his view. When he does, we start the countdown, the boar stops. And down he goes. This boar turned out to be a 215 pound boar and it's the large hog of the night. And that gave us a total of five recovered hogs from an oats field that had been harvested one week prior. Optics provided by Third Coast Thermal. Carpe sus, my friends.